Today, I'm here with Richard from Hughes and & Kettner, and uh, we're gonna be talking about something brand new, the Black Spirit 200 floorboard. Is it just called the floorboard? It's called the floor amp. The floor amp. Yeah. There's a couple of brand new features on this which are not on the head and are not on the combo. One of them being a mode called Direct 7, which allows you to make seven different presets within the amp, seven different sounds, if you will, and you can recall them with the press of the seven buttons there. That's not how the foot switch normally works. We've also got over here, two buttons there with pre-loop written next to them, and that's basically, think of it as having like a loop switching device, so you can, for example, patch in your favorite gain pedals or something like that if you want to use them straight into the pre-section. Okay, and that's different than like the effects loop. And that's the different other. to the effects loop, yeah. Because? Because you do have a standard effects loop on the back here. Right. And think of it like, well, if you had delay or reverb, for example, you'd stick that in the effects loop in the back, wouldn't you? But if you had gain pedals, you'd want to put them in the front, similar to the four cable method. So with the pre-loop feature, do you have the option of, let's say, so let's say we mount this to a your, your, your favorite pedal board unit. Yeah. Okay. And for me, I'm going to say, even though I use the boost on this amp, I'd still do use a boost pedal as well. Yeah. So I'll throw a boost and let's say a wall. Yeah. Okay. Um, now what I can do is uh, essentially leave those pedals on all the time. Is there a way to access turning them on off on the pre-loop? So for example, if you've got your boost pedal in this first loop here, you press that and it's activated. Okay. Okay. And then if you want it in a preset, you simply save it like that. If you don't want it in another preset, you turn it off and you save it like that. So, Wow. Right, so I'm thinking like, yeah, you. I'm thinking like it's on and you can turn it on and off, but you could program it so that when I go to channel two, yeah, boost comes on, but I go back to channel one, the boost will be taken out of the pre post or the uh, pre-loop. Yeah, so you could have two identical sounds on the amp, here in A and B, for example, and on B, you could have this active, for example, and on A, not, and it's effectively turning the boost on and off. But the boost pedal itself does stay on all the time, and you're controlling it through this. That's really cool. And the effects loop actually works exactly the same as well. So you can program that in and out of all the different presets. Okay, so that's new. That's not in the, the amp combo or the head combo version. What else is no, not in the... The head? other new thing is actually what we talked about in Top Top Secret yesterday morning, and that's something on the back, which we probably can't see in close-up, but it's an extra monitor input. Right. And that's going to be really useful for guys who might want to be using in-ears or something like that. It will enable them to give a... You can give a feed from the amp to front of house and you can get back the band mix in your in-ears or something like that, and you can use the volume controls to kind of get the levels of your guitar right within the mix. And also, you're getting your sound not affected by whatever the, the, uh, the sound man's doing. Exactly. So what I'm curious to see is if it still does what the head and combo does. So I'm just looking real quick to make sure all my settings are where I like them. My favorite setting on this product is to use the clean channel at about 80% gain with uh -huh. the boost. That to me is the Marshall Plexitone. Right? So to me, that's the amp I want to take with me wherever I go. For, you know, if you're going to the rock sound, yeah. right? When you do the seven patches, just, I'm just reaching, can you do multiple versions of the same, the same channel? Yeah, sure. So I could create a clean, so to me, and this amp, because I, I definitely like on the old, but to me, if I could do a preset, so maybe you can help me figure this out, yep. then we'll know. I want a preset where I'm clean, right? So we would do, so I'm, what I'll do is I'll we'll work as a team. Let's do it. This is the sound I like. Okay, so that's your, your basic clean That's what sound. I want for yep. what I would say is my, yeah, my clean sound. So yep. okay. how do I make that my clean sound now? Okay, so you, you've got the sound that you want, exactly how you want it. To yep. save it, let's say we're going to save it to this button here, sure. to 1A. You just press the store button right there. You tap the switch. It'll flash a couple of times, and it's there. So if, let's, I'll take you to the next sound. Sure, Yeah, how that sounds. Yeah. Just play. Be different, we'll go back. Okay, so in theory, let's go to the next next channel or yep. the next, uh, uh, what do we call it? Preset, right? Yeah, all right, yeah. So two, we got the number two preset. Okay. And now I want to make my next sound, which will be the same channel though, clean. Yeah. But I like, like I said, 80% gain and the boost engage. Yeah, okay. 
perfect. That's it, perfect as it is. So simple as. I'll, I'll let you do it, actually. I'll teach you. So okay. what, the process was pretty simple, wasn't it? So you so, just press the store button there. Right. And Select. then you press where you want to save it, which is there, and it should be in there. One thing you can do with this that you can't do with a regular amp. At home, I will use different pickups. Obviously, uh -huh. the neck is where I will play clean. When I play live, especially someone like me, that most of the time, 90% of the time I'm playing live, it's a jam format. Yeah. I get invited to go play with other musicians. Yeah. So this is why you would take something like this, plug it in, get your sound. I need to go and just play, and I need to not think, because I'm usually, uh, I play the actual songs that I've learned two minutes before I walked yeah. up to play. Yeah. And um, what I like to do with things is, I uh, like two clean channels, right? And the reason is, is because I will do a clean channel like this, Right? But what I will do, which which in my mind sounds like this. See with the neck pickup? Okay. Yeah. So what I'll do is I'll take that same clean. And now what I'm trying to do is replicate. See what I'm doing? I'm uh, replicating that sound on the on the bridge pickup. Yes. Yeah, alright. So that way. Okay, so in this case, now what I'm gonna do is just hit store. Yeah. Right? Tap the preset. Which yeah. is the same, even though it was, I was on that preset, I'm typing the same preset I was on. Yeah. And it flashed, now it's saved that way, right? Exactly, yeah. So you, you've overwritten the old one. Okay. Yeah. So now, what should happen is, here's my gain. Go ahead and do the clean. Yeah. So when I'm switching channels, I don't have to be like switching, you know what I mean? I'm not thinking anymore. And even though it's never gonna be sonically the same as being in that neck position, yeah. to the audience, it warmed up, it's not as bright, yeah. it's, it sounds familiar to me in my ears. That's pretty cool. You know what's funny? That's another thing we should mention. It's metal. Of course. Well, you know what? It looks, well, but it does. Oh, but there you here's go, yeah. the see? But see, that's why, that's why sometimes when you're making videos, you need to do the tactile things, touch, <laughs> talk about that, because looking at, I'm looking at the, the picture of it, yeah. looking at the picture of it, it looks like plastic. Yeah, this it kind like, of does, yeah. Yeah, this, this looks like plastic. Yeah. So this is a steel, which we can't touch it because it's in a special spot. Oh yeah, spot. I've just been knocking it on a view. But it, it's, uh, yeah, because that's one when I picked it up. I was actually, uh, it's not heavy, but it's heavier than you think it's going to be considering the head is so light. Yeah. Because um, it's definitely, well, think of this. It was definitely, when I picked it up yesterday, it was heavier than the head is, yeah. right? So, I mean, the head's like six, seven pounds, nothing, right? Yeah, I think, yeah, eight pounds or something. Eight pounds. Yeah. So, I mean, this is probably well, a pound or two heavier than that. Yeah. So, yeah. very cool. One thing that people say about low wattage tube amps, let's say, perfect example, let's use a, a, a Fender Princeton, 12 watt tube yeah. amplifier. That amplifier is on stages all around the world by all kinds of rock stars, literally can play a 12 watt tube amplifier and mic it up and gig. However, that same Princeton amplifier, even though Fender's notoriously known for the clean, is not going to be a clean amp. At, at, at that volume that you're gonna run that amp for a, any gig, small gig, large gig, you're now in a light overdrive world, right? Yeah, yeah. What's interesting about Class D power that they're using is this is a technology that has been in practice now for two decades in the bass world and the PA world too, right? Right. Yep. Um, it is very clean. So that's why like, I don't need to, so a perfect example is the Grandmeister 40 is a good example. If somebody says, hey, if I was on channel, let the lead channel or the, or the ultra channel on the Grandmeister 40, and so he's it loud enough for a double bass drum player? I would guess. And then the next question they ask you, but is the clean loud enough? And you're like, yeah, yeah, the clean holds its own and then starts breaking up because they want to know not how loud it is, but how loud can it maintain that clean ceiling? Yeah. This will maintain the clean ceiling much louder. Yeah. We know that because this same power amplifier is used in bass amplifiers, which have to stay clean. Exactly. That's yeah. exactly the purpose of a Class D power amp section is why they started using it for bass is it's huge amount, it's volume, Got a lot of volume and it holds because the bass player doesn't want to overdrive the sound. And the equation that I like to use is two two times, two and a half times. So to get class D power right for as you need to be two and a half times what the tube amp guy oh, has. Okay. Mm -hmm. Right? Does that make sense? Yeah. That's not a that's not a scientific, you know, engineering technical term. That's just a guideline. Like if somebody goes, I'm using a 50 watt Marshall head, I would in my brain go, okay, so two times that would be a hundred. Two and a half times would be 150. I need a minimum 150 watt Class D bass amp 
To keep up with that. To keep up with that. Yeah. Because, and that's what's interesting about this. So, like, when you see 200 watts, 200 watts sounds scary. Like, a lot of people are like, that's a lot of wattage. It is, but you literally need that wattage in class D form to get the veracity of what the tube amp is doing. Yeah, sure. For a loud gigging situation, if that's what you need, if you've got a loud stage, yeah. Yeah. You do need so, it. Based on that video, <laughs> how loud it was, <laughs> uh, I'd actually say this is actually better than my rule for mm -hmm. efficiency. I would say this is closer to uh, 100 watt, uh, 80, 100 watt. Two okay, yep. I want to thank Richard so much. Um, Richard and I know each other now for two years, right? Yeah, pretty much, yeah. Richard was at the very first GitCon. Yeah. I still owe him a beer. You do? So, because I'm so American that I went to Germany without any euros. <laughs> I went with my credit card, and then we were at a bar where they don't take, they wouldn't take they, credit cards. They didn't take cards, and then, yeah. And then you saved me, because I... I stepped in with money. Yeah. Yes. Um, so I still owe him that beer. Uh, <laughs> probably, he'll probably never get it at this point, uh, two years in. But we'll see. One day, maybe we'll make it up. <laughs> um, so anyways, thank you for doing the video with us. Yeah, thanks for having me. Till next time, know your gear. This is this product is for me, for guys like me. If I go back to this, my clean sound, right? Yeah. There's always a flavor of the month pedal. You know, you buy a pedal and then you just can't help but play it, right? Even touring musicians do that. They take one off their board and they put the whatever's the flavor of the month. So to me, it's like, I get to have this as my amp. I'll probably use this 75% of the time I'm using the amp tones. Yeah. And the other 25% of the time, I'm using my flavor of the month pedal. Yeah, yeah. And I'm just running it into the clean of the amp. Yeah. But what's great is I don't have to worry about bringing my delay. I don't have to bring anything else. Everything in here is legit. It sounds great. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, we're never going to say like they're the best delay that you're ever going to get, but they're totally functional and they'll do oh. a job. No, the thing I think you really nailed was the reverb. Oh yeah? And the delay. Yeah. Like I I don't have I told you I, I at, you know when I was going through the head and I was really putting it through the paces and going through it. Um I was trying to figure out like, you know, cuz there's what what am I sacrificing? You know what I mean when I was looking yeah. at stuff. And I have a delay pedal that I like and I have a reverb pedal I like and you're like, okay. And when I'd AB, I'm like, yeah, these are legit. I could use these just as well as those. I don't feel yeah. like, man, okay, well, even though they gave me reverb, I'm turning it off and using yeah. my reverb pedal. Yeah. Um, so, the, um, in fact, I try to think of anything that I, I don't like, and it's, I really don't have any complaints. Isn't that funny? You can always complain about something. Yeah. <laughs> um, does the head... Does the, I didn't even pay attention. Does the head do the same thing? Can I program the head so that on, my, on foot controller that all all four channels are the clean channel? Yeah. So all that, yeah, you need a foot switch. Yeah, to yeah. Do that. Well, yeah. They, but you can do it exactly. You, you, you know, you've got up to 128 different sounds and they can all be clean channel if that's what you want. Well, what you guys did on the head uh, that I love is that the foot switch is, uni your foot switch is universally useful for the Grandmeister 40. Yeah. And the... The, 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 the black spirit. Yeah. Um, that's what I love, right? Um, because I I can just like, oh, when I'm, I go through phases. Like one week I'm playing the Grandmeister 40 because I like it. Yeah. And then I play this and I go, okay, I think deep down, because they're so, so so familiar in the feature sets, right? Yeah. Four yeah. channels. I, when I A-B'd them, because that's what I was curious about, right? Like, what are you losing? And I think in every category for me, and it was funny because the guys and I were talking yesterday and some of them had the opposite opinion about the gain channel. They like the gain channel in this more than the Grandmeister uh -huh. 40 and stuff. Me personally, I like the Grandmeister 40. I thought Grand Grandmeister 40 win in every category by let's say 10%. Yeah. The clean was 10% better. The gain was 10% better, in yeah. my opinion, yeah. than the Black Spirit. Yeah. But when you start looking at a little better, it doesn't really matter. Yeah. You know what I mean? You're like, okay, well then I'll prefer this, so I'll use it. But the fact that this is, I, I trust this more yeah. to take this, you know, and beat it up. Yeah, sure, yeah. Leave it in my car. Drop it on the ground or whatever, drop yeah. It. You're right. Yeah. yeah. So. Um, I mean, like, if you're playing a gig or something, I think that 10% yeah. is what the audience will never pick up on, you know. Right. By the way, we're in Germany.